It looks like oh, yeah. you finished the first layer. Yeah, everything's level. Because that was the challenge at the last yeah. video. It was like, you were able to get all the way around, but you were discovering some discrepancies in height. Yeah, that, so. <laughs> that southeast side was, the cement was up higher. So didn't quite get it leveled when we, when we poured. So I had to do some trimming. And okay. so I went around the inner layer, inner ring, and then uh, got that all level. And then I leveled the outer ring. I went all around that and got that level. So leveling it with like shims or a combination of combination of shims and having to trim a little bit. So, so now we're just kind of filling in the little gaps in between because right. There was a lot of cutting of a styrofoam. So there's a few gaps around the, around right, the, right. So then we'll, uh, and then once we do that, then we'll lay the, the ring of rebar is one, one rebar ring. So we don't have to do two like we did in the footer. We just need one. And then uh, mm. we tie that down and then, uh, then we go to the next layer. Hey, we're doing it. We're doing it. Okay, so we filled in all the little gaps. Now the next fun part is putting the re laying the rebar down on all of these yellow braces. So you're measuring for where the bend's gonna be? Yeah, approximately. So you'll start in one, in one corner and then... Yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll try to overlap over there. Okay. Just have the end stick out and then get two sections complete. Bent far enough. Yeah. So you made a little guide there with your angle yeah. brace. Bingo. Go your way. Okay. In the middle, right down the middle. Row number two. <laughs> Ready for row number two. Woo! First row done. Rebar in. Tied in. Row number two. Row number two. All right. So if anyone's new that's joining our channel, just trying to see what it is about, um, see what we're doing about building a greenhouse. Uh, we are building a year-round geodesic dome greenhouse from the company Growing Spaces. And we're doing a GAT system in the foundation, which is an air transfer system to help stabilize temperature. So we've, we're going through the trouble of building a six foot wall to make our foundation really stable and insulated and 
helping us enjoy the year round, uh, the year round greenhouse. So what's the strategy for a second layer as far as like spacing goes? So I'm trying to overlap one of the joints. It doesn't, we could put a bunch in a row. We could put a bunch of 12 inch pieces. So we could, we could achieve it with long pieces, but you're wanting to use up the small pieces. So we're not wasting. Right. Got it. Okay. Cause it, if we have full packages, we can return them. Okay. Smaller, a whole stack of smaller pieces that we could use up. Right. Like we could put this one here. Like that. Yep. Okay. Hey folks, well, we're getting a few rows up now and we're having to use a step stool and a ladder to kind of climb over the wall. So, well, we'll see what happens when we get six feet up. We did that outside ring last night. It's a little bit slower. The, the inner ring requires a little bit more measuring. I'm trying to use up some of the smaller pieces on the inside because the inside's under compression when you, we put the, the cement in there. So it'll kind of tighten things up a little bit. So yeah, so I'm trying to use up scrap on the inner. So that takes a little bit more time as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I do try to, you know, measure out a good, you know, half of all the rings. So, um, or half the ring. So I can just sit there, cut a bunch and then go fit them. And So Brian's doing all the measuring and cutting of the foam. And I've been doing the ties, like the plastic ties and then the wire ties, tying the rebar. Yeah, time consuming yeah. stuff, but something I can do pretty easily. Yeah, the last two rows of uh, ICF, it's going to be the stem wall. So it's not going to be underground, right? Right, right. So it's only four feet underground. Okay. So. Okay. It's a nice day. Got to get to it. It's like a little air fryer in here with all this styrofoam reflecting the heat or trapping the heat. I don't know, we're like a little bowl with the sun on top. Sweaty. 
You got a new hydration strategy. I do. <laughs> it's hot in here. Well, we've gotten to that point, folks, where I need a ladder to get into the pit. <laughs> it's a little tricky. Oh, and I see the ladder fell on the inside fell over. That's going to be tricky. Hmm. Mm. See what I'm saying? My ladder fell over. I'm going to get in there. Yeah, I'm not jumping. Oh, you think you can hurdle your way in? jump lower to the ground. <sighs> just like a, just like a, just like an old man. Just like an old man. I was like, like a high jumper, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Another day, another outfit. So. Yeah. Can't wait to get the pool liner in, fill it full of water. We'll be, Styling. What? Sw uh, swimming in the summer. Funny and guy. Ice skating in the winter. We are at the four foot level now. So we're at a significant point. We only have two layers to go, except this is all the area that's going to get backfilled. So right. that's our, our milestone on this project. Right. So, so this uh, will all be underground. Right? That's all our heat storage and cold air will be coming from everything below here so yep. so brian's put an order in uh for some corrugated pipe yeah it's a 15 so. inch so we're getting three 15 inch diameter 20 foot pipes yep and then we got to buy a bunch of the the four inch silk covered corrugated pipe yep so. so in a combination with some inline fans it'll be harvesting all of the air from underground deep underground and then putting it into the greenhouse when we need yeah. to have a more regular temperature so yeah so like a day like today we'll be needing the cool air from underground yep, yep. and then uh days like you know january we'll be needing the heat out of it yeah so. so we'll be getting 50 degree air in the middle of january coming into the dome without any heat so going pretty good so far any other things you've noticed about the process um no it's it's once you've done it a, a layer or two then then the it's a lot easier, right? Yeah. So you know exactly what you need to do, and because it's not square, right? It's not it's not the same. Well, it is the same thing over and over, but mm -hmm. it's not just offsetting by two feet every time. So yeah, it's a little um, trickier with the angles yeah. and having the fifteen sides. Yeah, there's a lot of measuring. Yeah. Yeah. every every so it's time so. definitely harder than doing the basement so for folks that have done this before we're not just dealing with square angles here so a little more time consuming but yeah you can uh, see all my measuring right <laughs> so I, I measure a whole bunch and then i go back and um and then cut a whole bunch of stuff and then then i go put them in place so it works out good doing it this way so. yeah and that first layer took the longest that took at least a whole weekend to get yeah. that first layer and then you spent the whole day saturday just making sure everything was shimmed and level right. so that was just a whole day's worth of work getting it perfect yeah. and then the other three layers on top of that was about two solid days worth yeah. of work so yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so that's about how long it takes for two regular people to do this kind of job. In the future, probably what I'd do is put some kind of screening boards in so it's perfectly level right from the get-go. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> so that would probably be, because it was, it was tough to get it level just putting some spikes in the ground. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Two more to go. Two more to go. Mmm, nice and wet. See what you mean about it hurts your hands to bang on it. Yeah. Here's the. Here.
Plus he'll squish the thing. Right. All right, just a little bit more to go. We're almost there. Just two more rows and we're ready for concrete. 